All right. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Corina Sandu. I am the uh, ISTVS uh, president. Uh, I'm a professor in the mechanical engineering department at Virginia Tech. And today is my honor to introduce our guest speaker, um, Mr. Chris Mason. He is chief executive officer at FISITA. Uh, Chris joined FISITA as CEO in 2014, overseeing the extensive modernization of FISITA. He has led its transformation into a leading platform for global knowledge exchange and collaboration across the automotive and mobility systems industry. Chris has repositioned the organization as the FISITA International Connected Community, <coughs> enabling a new era of digital member engagement. A fellow and member of the board of the Institute of the Motor Industry in the United Kingdom, Chris is a recognized expert within the international automotive and mobility systems area and welcomes invitations to contribute to international discussions and thought leadership on the continued transition of the automotive and mobility industry. As you all know, ISTVS is happy now to be a member of FISITA, and uh, it is my pleasure to invite Chris to give us uh, a few of his, of his thoughts in this event. So, Chris, please, thank you. Karina Mai, thanks to you and thanks to ISTVS colleagues for arranging today's session. It's my absolute pleasure to speak with you all and to share some thinking on the FISITA organization and uh, the, the membership uh, organization uh, uh, arena uh, in general, as we do, uh, and, and how organizations such as FACITA, ISTVS, uh, can modernize, continue to consider modernization as a key uh, priority to a, a, a relevant place within the landscapes within which we exist. But before I do, I thought maybe I could introduce myself for 30 seconds. I'm now uh, in my 38th year uh, as a, uh, uh, a motor industry person, starting my career when a, a younger version of the, the, the man you see today uh, did a, uh, an old style apprenticeship with Jaguar uh, before moving on to work with Toyota and then delivering some small business activities of my own throughout my 20s before finding myself at the Society of Motor Manufacturers and Traders uh, in the year 2000, uh, which then uh, turned into a 14 year career with the SMMT, the UK's Trade Association for the Motor Industry, covering all aspects of the motor industry from, you know, design manufacturer to use uh, as ever. Uh, leading many interesting and, and beneficial initiatives that uh, I still believe uh, of value to our industry and its customers today. And then in 2014, I uh, took a call from the then Ford CTO, Paul Mascarenas, uh, uh, asking whether we could have a discussion about me heading up the FACITA organization. And of course, uh, at that point, uh, I was uh, ready for the next adventure and to move out of the UK industry to the international platform of FACITA was the, the, the right opportunity for me. And what I can talk about over the next 30 minutes or so is uh, our organization, my leadership of the organization, importantly, uh, how we've now uh, modernized FACITA twice under my leadership, one intentionally uh, and the other uh, enforced through uh, COVID. Uh, but all I think very, very relevant for uh, our world today of, of, of technologists, uh, engineers, technology strategists and, uh, and, and leaders. So if I may uh, begin the presentation. So we were talking about the mission of FACITA, um, creating collaborative thought leadership and support for the world's mobility systems engineers. Uh, in, in support of them achieving their goals, pushing the boundaries of technology. And we felt that the element of, of, of maintaining high ethical standards is really important as we move through uh, the, uh, the period of my uh, initial leadership back in 2014-15. There's a lot of focus on uh, the ethical engineering uh, standards. So we need to make sure that you know, our engineering colleagues are being asked to 
address the right challenges uh, because we know uh, our engineer colleagues can achieve whatever challenges put in front of them. So we need to enable them to make sure that's about delivering continuous improvement that enables the positive progress that will benefit our society. And that's still the framework that, you know, FACITA operates in today. It's not vastly different to the mission of FACITA back in 1950 when we were uh, first established, but really aligned with the modern, uh, the modern industry that we all exist within. In terms of our members, you'll see ISTVS uh, within our national society members uh, on the left hand side. So engineering societies traditionally from different nations uh, were FACITA's first membership group when the engineering societies of France, Italy, Poland and Spain came together back in 1948 to prepare a congress to enable the world's engineers to come together on a single platform every two years to share technology and to support each other. And of course, the strategy remains the same all these years later. FACITA continues uh, to deliver its Congress every two years as a platform for engineers to come together. And we've also welcomed uh, a number of corporate members into the organization since the mid 1990s, when the executive board of FACITA felt it correct to uh, to, to enable the industry to have a place within the FACETA membership. And of course, now we have an advisory board from academia and we have our strategic partners that we're close to. I think the reflection on the modern membership organisation is a study in how membership organisations have evolved over the last 50, 60, 70 years. And the key moments appear to be the... Uh, the dawning of the internet age and then the challenge of, of the COVID period in the sustainability and longevity of traditional uh, membership organisations. We can talk about this a little bit as we go through the perhaps the discussion in the second half, but very, very clearly the dawning of the internet enabled people access to content and community at the click of a button whenever they felt like uh, accessing it. And then the dawning of the internet has meant that people now realize they, they don't need to travel so much to be together. Uh, they can do a lot of knowledge share through the digital platforms, but also the COVID period has enabled us to understand that human beings still have a need to be together, to meet with the right people for the right reasons at the right time. And we can talk about that a little bit more throughout the session. In terms of the modernization of FACITA, uh, our organization has been around since the world still looked a little bit like when the Ford Motor Company was opening the highways to all mankind and has been sat in the background supporting engineers for every single step of, of, of technical evolution along the way. And that's a significant moment for us to consider, I believe, that our organization has, has quietly and competently supported many, many generations of engineers and many generations of engineers that were developing and implementing their own technical innovations with no knowledge of the impact of the continued demand for transportation uh, over the long term that leads us to the challenges of success that we're also familiar with today in road transportation terms the inefficiency of, of, uh, of our journeys, the inefficiency of single occupancy vehicles, the inefficiency of ownership, the contribution of our industry to the environmental challenges of our planet, and of course, the safety uh, risks of uh, uh, the owner driver uh, era. But what we know is that this generation of engineers are providing the solutions to all of the challenges of success uh, that have been coming to the fore for the last 20, 30, uh, 40 years or so. And the visual on the right hand side of our screen comes from the FACITA white paper, Mobility Engineer 2030, which was uh, a member collaboration that we coordinated through 2016, 2017 into 2018 and launched at the FACITA World Congress in Chennai 
in 2018 and really gave me the platform to point for CETA in a new direction. Because as we can see, internal combustion and mechanical engineering don't feature in the priority subjects of the future of mobility uh, that our members determined. Uh, we have a whole bunch of other technological uh, areas that we need to explore and understand as an international community as the industry around us reshapes and changes fast and forever. Of course, energy is going to be a consideration for some time, as is uh, driver versus driver assistance and autonomous. Uh, but the point is that moving us forward, we now have the position to become a very different organisation to the one that we had been for a long while. But within this consideration is also the workplace evolution. Uh, I'd had a keen interest on workplace evolution for some time before COVID, as we see, you know, the 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 the, the, the visuals uh, sequentially move forward in the same way uh, 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 in workplace evolution from traditional through progressive into a change agenda that was happening before COVID, where digital and virtual virtual techniques were being adapted as efficiencies. Uh, of our members. But of course, a period in 2020 saw those accelerate beyond any imagination that could have predicted in 2019 to be possible, which are now, of course, the new pathways that are embedded for the long term within many of our members. So my point here is FACITA has an interest in the technology of mobility, but also the methodology of delivering the technology of mobility, which opens the landscape of consideration for our organization tremendously as we go forward. So in terms of modernizing the organization, we know that between 1950 and 2014, not much changed within the FACITA world. It delivered what its membership expected from it, a Congress every two years uh, and some other technical conferences and opportunities around the world uh, in between times. 2014 was a moment for the FACITA leadership to consider its sustainability uh, and its longevity as, as an organisation because membership of traditional societies was on the decline. Uh, conferencing around the world was challenged at that time through competition, through the commercial conference organisers becoming significantly more active in the uh, two decades that preceded. Uh, me joining the organisation. So my brief was simple. It was to create uh, a modern, sustainable organisation for the technology of mobility community. And that for me in the first instance meant much more opportunity than merely, you know, road-based transportation, which is why I believe, you know, we're here having this presentation and this conversation today. And we're here with you as one of uh, the first of the new era of society members of FACITA that I uh, expect to continue to grow away from its traditional base over uh, the years that follow, that allow FACITA to continue to consider itself to be a modern membership organisation, to the point that post-COVID we're repositioning ourselves to be known as the International Connected Community of FACITA, because now I think we have the correct mix of focus and activities developed with our members to see us really accelerate in the post-COVID era. From the member engagement perspective, my advice to the board was that we pull back from trying to uh, continue to deliver and develop more in-person engagement sessions uh, around the world every year. We put a stop to that and we replaced that with the digital member expert working groups. This way we'll be able to engage with more members more efficiently, more effectively, and engage more of their people than FACITA would ever have been able to do in the pre-COVID world. And this vision is coming to fruition. On screen now I detail six of the initial working groups that have been established through uh, the COVID period. The one exception to that is intelligent safety that was the forerunner we created in 2019. But now we have uh, many, many experts engaged in 
uh, each of these working groups, well over, I'd say, 200 experts across all six of these groups now, focused on developing and delivering agendas of work that they determine as their priorities to support thought leadership, knowledge share and progress in their specific areas uh, of technology. What you'll see throughout the course of this year is us releasing the first uh, thought leadership position papers, white papers from these groups, setting out uh, their uh, thinking for the period that they've just worked through over the last 18 months and identifying the priorities for the next phase of work between 2023 and 2025. So popular has this initiative been that we've got a pipeline backing up now of other member determined priority subjects. Uh, and this is just uh, a glimpse. I think we've probably got the same again that are still in a consideration phase. So the pipeline for digital member working groups uh, is now very, very strong for at least the next two years. Uh, and as I said, through this initiative, we now have more focus to work day to day, week to week, month to month with our members around the world, with more of their people engaged with their peers around the world, more effectively and more efficiently via Facetas platforms than ever before. So I think in response to the impact of COVID, we have reduced the amount of travel we ask of our members. So, you know, that's good from a, 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 an environmental footprint perspective. It's good on the the cost base for our members perspective. It's good for a time away from the office perspective for our members. And it's great for, 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 for CETA because we're actually more relevant today than we were in 2019. And we weren't doing a bad job then. So I think the digital piece is set very, very nicely. And we'll continue to build on this. This is a, a one of two priority focuses for this year uh, and next year. But then to talk about how things move forward uh, in person, I think is really, really interesting at this time because where we took a bold step in quarter one, 2020, uh, we've taken another bold step now, which is we don't believe that the hybrid solution is a solution that suits anybody very well anymore. We believe we need to work either digitally or in person. Otherwise, we can't determine success of, of either of the two really important categories. That's either connecting digitally to be more effective and more efficient or coming together in person because we've got a need to meet with the right people for the right reasons at the right time. So now within the international connected community of FACITA, we have our day to day, week to week, month to month engagement through the digital platforms and we are just releasing the in-person uh, activity that will see us uh, fit for uh, the new era of CETA, where we're launching the Technology of Mobility Conference and Exhibition. will take place once in every two-year work cycle, commencing this September in Barcelona. So the next time this event will happen will be September 2025 in Barcelona. So really focusing on the strategy now of we need to be digital, or we need to be in person, but understanding the caveat that came from our members, which is post COVID, there simply isn't enough opportunity or cash for us to travel as much as we used to do. So we make for CETA's event a big one that gets in everybody's diaries every two years to deliver thought leadership and knowledge share around the technology of mobility for everybody from student to CTO as their opportunity to meet with the right people for the right reason at the right time, which means we deliver our Faceta World Congress as we have done every two years since 1950. Uh, within the week of activities at the CCIB venue in Barcelona, we'll also deliver the Faceta Technical Leadership World Mobility Summit, which is run every year for the past 13 years. We will deliver our inaugural Intelligence Safety Conference Europe, which spins out of our highly successful Intelligence Safety Conference China, that's now in its fifth year. And then, of course, we own the world's largest breaking technology conference, Eurobreak, which will also be delivered under the same roof at the same time uh, throughout the week in September. 
So the footprint of the event will look like this. The World Congress will take its usual format, four day uh, technical conference for engineers, technologists, scientists, and technical leaders. Euro break over three days, the usual annual meeting of that community, usually attracts around uh, 100 exhibitors and 1,000 delegates. Intelligence Safety Conference Europe will be the first of a high level strategy session that will take place every two years uh, to enable the intelligence safety community within FACITA to recalibrate its strategic approach for the two year period ahead to enable the intelligence safety working group to move its work forward and to enable us to align the general technology uh, conference of intelligence safety in China uh, to sit within the context of the strategic approach within the FACITA community. And then our World Mobility Summit, the CTOs of all of our corporate members and leaders of our society members annual by invitation gathering will take place on the third day. We then look to bring the digital working groups into the in-person week of activities. The FACITA working group forums are already being planned uh, as participative uh, elements for each working group. They're going to come along and hold a session each to report the work of the group carried out today, uh, the position they've got themselves to by September, and then their plans for the 2023 to 25 period. We'll have at least one taking place every day throughout the course of the week. And then we're also setting up a new initiative, president-led climate change uh, initiative that we are delivering via our national society. So uh, ISTVS is welcome to contribute to this. And we've already had some discussions where we'll be setting a long-term view to take place every two years on the current status of uh, climate change from the, the three regions we divide the world into, Europe, the Americas, and Asia Pacific. So another really high priority subject that our membership has, uh, has prioritized that we begin to focus on uh, for the long term. And then everything is underpinned by the Student Opportunities Programme as ever. Any in-person event that FACITA runs uh, in my time as CEO, we've sponsored a number of students to come and participate free of charge as a way of welcoming the next generation into our community. So we think that uh, the Congress uh, is taking great shape. The, uh, the Congress itself uh, is, is, is well set, has been uh, in planning for now best part of nine months in terms of what it is we want to cover. Under the title of the technology of mobility, we've identified three pillars, the design, the manufacture and use of the technology of mobility, and then the universal themes that span uh, the topics that span each of those three pillars. Gives us around 20 sessions for the Congress. We are now into the last phase of the call for papers. We've had an excellent response, excellent amount of papers back uh, with two weeks left to go. We're still expecting that lastminute.com avalanche of papers in. So we're delighted that we come back to an in-person activity and the technical community is uh, contributing so positively. And I hope you can see that we've worked hard to make sure that we position ourselves as a very forward-facing Congress. So our focus on the technology of mobility is reflected in the titles of the sessions that you can see on screen, which we'll be delivering out in September in Barcelona, along with the working group forums of us, as I've already uh, discussed and the National Society Island Initiative. We believe that the knowledge share and thought leadership at the Technology of Mobility Conference and Exhibition uh, will be a significant return to in-person events and an excellent place to start to build this Barcelona event every two years going forward to 2025, 2027 uh, and beyond. So I do hope you're able to join us in Barcelona. I do hope you found my update uh, of value. I hope I've met with your 
expectations today. And I hope I've delivered not just an overview of FACITA, where we came from, who we are, but also how we continue to challenge ourselves to modernize uh, throughout uh, the last eight years, specifically through the last three years, and now how we will continue to do so in the post COVID era with a fine mix of digital and in-person engagement activities with our members. My apologies for the glitch at the beginning. Uh, it's the world we live in these days, but I'm sure I can stop sharing my screen uh, and hand over to our moderators for uh, the discussion that we may have. Thank you very Thanks. much, Chris. Um, I would like to invite Lutz to take over and monitor the Q&A session. Thank Karina, you. Thank you. Yes. Chris, you and I uh, last time talked directly one on one back in January about our participation in um, the FISITA meeting, Congress and other events uh, this September. Um, and I can already confirm that we as ISTBS, we will have a an uh, exhibition booth. Yeah. Um, plus, we plan uh, to be there with a few other activities and available um, to deliver keynote speeches as well as contribute to the climate change uh, sessions. Uh, we think it's an exciting platform for us also. And um, so that's good news. Thank you for your support. I very much appreciate it. And, and yeah. I can all yeah, it's enormous. I mean, the, the program that uh, you and the team have put together is really very impressive uh, for the event Thank in you. September. And yeah, let, let's first um, hear it from the audience. So uh, are there questions to Chris? This is the moment of truth. <laughs> well, the Chris, let me add this. Yeah. Uh, also last year, we had a few conference calls between uh, ISTVS and your team. And uh, so our mission, our, let's say, charter really is the, the domain of uh, terrain vehicles. Yeah. So off the road mobility. Mm -hmm. And uh, so our interest in being affiliated or, or member or organization of FISITA really is to, to anchor uh, that domain in uh, within FISITA, uh, so to really be able to contribute from a, from a discipline side yeah. uh, here uh, with regards to off the road mobility, and uh, we appreciate your suggestions and your team's suggestions of how to do that effectively. So how can we? That, that this is a question to you how can we most effectively um enter that uh, <clears throat> let's say this uh, discipline the off-road mobility into the agenda of visita uh through which mechanism would you suggest well let's, let's, as as i referred to i think that you know the way membership organizations need to keep challenging themselves to be relevant is is my first priority and you know when we talk about our society membership you know i think this is a case in point i think you know istvs is one of the uh, newer members of our society membership and and the reason is there is because uh i think that the off-road mobility opportunity is unsighted to a lot of people i think in in today's uh technology of mobility world some of the advances in uh, autonomy and and, and the, the, the broader uh, technical uh, evolution in off-road are of high value to the non-off-road community whatever that may be right the traditional automotive or, or or other types of mobility especially in autonomy I think you know and I think you know things that we can start to bring to the fore uh in advancement in agriculture or, or or those kind of you know associated off-road uh mobility uh, areas can be places for colleagues 
to take thought leadership from. So back to my first slide, right? The mission of Faceta is about knowledge share. And I think that our presence at the Technology and Mobility Conference and Exhibition in 23 and in 25 and 27, et cetera, et cetera, is a great way to look at a long-term uh, uh, kind of stepping stones to broaden the knowledge base of you know peers and colleagues around the international connected community of Faceta. I think I think as we move forward the initiative that I'm looking to mature where our society members can introduce corporate members to Faceta is another area right so whether that's at the Barcelona conference or just in membership terms I think bringing to the community as well as taking from the community is of high value to people in your community so Faceta acts as the as the as the hub if you like of thought leadership knowledge share networking and b2b engagement and all those things are interconnected you know from seeing a presentation fortuitously in Barcelona to a discussion to a bit of business being delivered we we, we know how these things work so there's a there's an element of you know the, the the greater the participation the greater return is realized but i think just positioning the organization within faceta is a, a fabulous place to start and we can continue to build on the value that we can deliver for you as we move through this new era strategy we've got um many opportunities that we're planning that will probably come on stream after the september uh, activity where we can hook people up in a b2b sense through platforms such as this to get that engagement moving forward so we can uh, we can really add some more commercial value to the companies within our organization which i believe offers value to organizations like yours to introduce the different companies to the community so as ever looks a long answer to a to a question but they tend to be in our kind of world right yeah yeah sounds sounds uh very encouraging and uh and in fact uh, we we have a few corporate members yeah. uh, so industrial type organizations uh and also research organizations and uh, we are we are looking to strengthen ties with with industry uh so that that's why being at the Fisita Congress also is very important to us to be able to uh, establish closer ties with with the vehicle industry. Exactly, and it's a door opener then for those mm. commercial establish. Yes, we're losing you there, Chris. I don't know if it's on my side. Okay, you're back. I'm back. Yeah, we had we had lost you, or I had lost you for a few seconds. Yeah, all right. So the, it's important to us in in several ways uh, being at the congress. Uh, other questions, Alex? Any thoughts from you, perhaps? Yeah. Uh, hello, Chris. Um, I've sort of been thinking one or two things, slightly more nuts and bolts uh, uh, type of things to sort of cooperate with. So um, if I sort of fire these in and see what, what you, you think. Uh, one of them is um, when we have events like this, it's trying to get the publicity to people who might be interested. Do you have a notice board or a news sheet going out on a pretty regular basis to be able to communicate from one uh, society group uh, to all the others about something that might be going on um yeah, yeah. For example, this session we might advertise it to somewhere else um if we've yeah. got um uh, we've got one coming up next week which is launching a special issue in the journal of terra mechanics so we're trying to widen our audience to people who may not be in the society who might be interested in the area of of, of soil modeling uh, and sensors and general mobility yeah we certainly do we we should have shared with you um 
through my colleagues the marketing toolkit that, that we have. But also there is a, a regular newsletter going out uh, on a on a Tuesday each week. It'll be going out tomorrow, unfortunately. This I'll make sure that you are on the distribution list for that. You should be by default because it's going to all members. Yeah. Could we put a link into our website to link to that, for example? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That might yeah. be um, quite useful for any, us. Any content or information that we provide you with, you have my permission to use to promote to your community. Okay. So do we feed information to Christina or to Ben? Who? Well, what's the best well, ben, strategy? Ben is, is the contact for marketing communications. Christina is the contact for you know, direct commercial sales discussion. So Ben in the first instance. Okay. But uh, copy, you know, if you're, if you're messaging one, copy the other one in. Okay. Um, a second sort of uh, uh, thought was on general training and professional development. I mean, some of the lectures we've had in the past have been looking at using uh software for modeling tires and soil and so on and looking at um, some of the new developments there um but obviously we're we're sort of a relatively small organization and it's interesting if these sorts of uh lecture demos come up in other areas quite a lot of our our members would be interested in that so is there any way of of, of um developing training which might also be linked to to certifiable um uh, uh professional development that you can then sort of list in on, on your cv and so on um particularly around uh, software modeling demos particularly around modeling techniques uh, uh, and uh, um, general design uh new ideas in design and development um never say never um but training isn't an, an an arena that i have identified for us to move into yeah it's something that we can facilitate you know if there's you know a national level um you know opportunity within our membership that we can support to promote to other members then you know that would be something we would be very interested in but the actual as you say nuts and bolts of delivering professional training isn't isn't something we've got the uh the the the, the, the vision on at this point in facita's uh, journey um but, you know we'd leave that to other organizations really i think okay um slightly to one side on that is that uh, we have a, a what we call a technical wiki where we we put uh, uh, information um, uh, a, 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 in our technical area, if you like, and have been trying to build that for two or three years. Uh, and I think at one point in one of the meetings, you did refer to sort of technical databases. Um, is there any way of coordinating these or getting access from one society to another? To technical information which is available to members yeah it could be something that the society committee of CETA might might look at um, you know it's knowledge share um, the, the only challenge with as you know you know sharing IP is it's usually not open source is usually a yeah a, a paywall in between the uh, the eyes and the the document and that you know that would be the challenge but I think it would certainly be something that I would suggest could be a value discussion within our society committee because you know if there's an amount of open source knowledge share available then the coordination of that is something that the CETA could be looked to to support if there's an appetite amongst the society members. So we'd have to open up the discussion, see what the appetite was with other members. Yeah. If there's an appetite there, then it is something that, you know, comes on the, the schedule for 
development. Yes, yeah, so all the information on our technical wiki is 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 generally available to all if anyone wants to uh, go and look at it. Um, most of our members are research orientated and in teaching, uh, so spreading uh, information and technology transfer is is a big part of our mission yeah, statement. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's one thing. But the point you make about the IP is uh, one I actually had down a little bit further is how do you manage um, IP? Is that an issue um, when you're working with different groups and particularly, I suspect, with commercial groups? Exactly the point is, you know, it's the challenge that everybody faces with IP. It's, it's restrictive in its very nature, isn't it? So you have to make sure that you have, um, you have to have everything uh, organized accordingly to meet with the expectation of, of the, the owner of the knowledge, right? So yeah, yeah. It's, com it's complex. But I, I think you know, I, do, I do see over time, you know, more and more people seeing the value of just an open source, you, you know, uh, environment where, you know, the, the person who has created the work wants it shared more broadly, uh, you know, for the greater good. And so, you know, I think that there's a, there's a discussion to be had around the evolution of access to written content that, that helps us to be a bit more inclusive but at the moment it's still very uh yeah it's still very bald yeah i mean the last point uh, really sort of links to that and that is the the ideas around cl collaborative research and sharing test facilities um some of our members i mean for example andrews is his, uh, um organization at pretoria have got some super um vehicle test facilities anything from from wheel testing to outdoors, mobility, uh, uh, testing on hard and soft ground. Um, and a lot of commercial organizations are probably not aware of some of the facilities that exist and actually could be um, made available and, uh, uh, you know, as part of cooperative or commercial um, uh, research. Um, is that, uh, that is another area that I suspect if, if, if we could build a database of organizations and what the facilities are, um, is that something that you have or something that you would be looking to do in the future? Um, in terms of uh, 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 of sharing knowledge of what different members offer, absolutely something we're interested in doing in terms of creating a collaborative or cooperative uh, approach to, you know, business fulfillment. Uh, that's something that we have to leave to the open uh, competitive arena, right? It's, it's difficult mm. for us to start to, to, to try and get involved in that kind of very commercialized kind of uh, arena. You know, we, we have to stay pretty competitive so b2b introduction i'm i'm all up for for there being mechanisms for people to understand what different members do and to make an acquaintance through the platform of procedure is one thing uh to be proactively supporting the commercial aspirations of certain members would be a, a difficult thing for us to be yeah i was thinking more along the lines of a directory of what uh, um, facilities people have got to yeah. offer and skills um, yeah. and where they're based so for example in certain parts of the world if you if you were to link into a research or an, a, an education uh, department it may actually make uh, access to the sorts of test areas that uh, um, companies yeah. were interested in a, a, a lot easier but the awareness of some of, of what's available may be quite thin in places so I think this aligns with you know, the aspiration for the development of the international connected community of FACITA. So over the next two to three years, you'll see us uh, rolling out initiatives that will see FACITA.com used much more proactively to connect our community. Uh, and so different initiatives will become part of that, that program. And I think raising the awareness within membership 
of what other members do, can do, want to do, will become an integral part of that, uh, part of that activity, right? Yeah. Your directory, as, as you say, you know, is, is, is probably the way uh, it, it, it's kind of forming in your mind, but it's slightly different. In my I mind. think, yeah, that's something I think we talked about internally recently of, of, of trying to develop. And if other organisations did the same, then the opportunities for cross cooperation may, may obviously then increase. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, you'll, you'll hear more from us on our plans to connect people uh, our organizations and companies as we move through the next, you know, phase post Barcelona 2023. Right. Okay, thanks. Um, so I'll, I'll put you back to look. Thank you. No, I, yeah, uh, yeah, sure, sure. Um, good. Any other thoughts, comments? Uh, if I may. Um, Karina, yeah. I, I have a, um, uh, question that is also related to our um, participation um, within the FISITA community, but I would put it a little bit uh, the other way around. We would be very happy to have, you know, members, uh, traditional members who participate in FISITA events at our ISTVS conferences. So uh, we would be happy to have invited speakers, you know, keynote lectures, uh, as well as uh, participants um, at all the sessions that we usually organize. Uh, what do you think is the best venue for us to, um, you know, inform the members about the ISTVS's activities and invite them to participate? We'd be very happy to see people outside of our uh, yeah. community join our events. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure that many of our sessions would be of high interest for, for a lot of your members. Yeah. And many of our other members think the same. And again, the answer is similar to my, my, my last one, which is, I think, as we go through the next period and you see our digital platforms evolving more in support of our international connected community we'll be able to do more to promote and connect members with other members activities on the platform of FACITA. Right now there's a there's a general listing of members um, events and conferences but I don't think it's um, engaging enough I don't think it enables you to achieve what you've just described to Macarena and I think you know this is an important role for FACITA to play to get experts from one area or one location connected to opportunities in another area or location and we could do a great job in just connecting those dots but I think that comes through the maturing of the digital platform the profiling of people and organizations and their activities so that it's much more searchable and findable through faceta.com than it is right now but you'll appreciate it's quite a significant development challenge for us that's going to take some some time but if you think about the international connected community of faceta i think our vision aligns there thank you very much my pleasure i'm sorry i haven't got a solution for you today but All right, any other remarks before we wrap up? Uh, Chris, I imagine we'll be talking again uh, over the next couple of weeks yeah. regarding the organization of, of the September event. Absolutely. So we will be in touch with you and the team to, to discuss one or the other uh, specific question regarding yeah, sure. our participation aside from the exhibition booth because we have a number of, of other plans going forward there. And, and remember for the ISTVS community, two weeks left to submit a technical paper still. Yes. All it needs to be is an abstract at this point. So 
uh, there's plenty of there's plenty of time and uh, you know we, we we're looking forward to seeing you and uh, and your community there with us in Barcelona yep all right Thanks hey, so for the reminder. can I have a final comment Lutz just to thank you from me to you uh, to Karina and to uh, everybody on the ISTVS side for inviting me to speak today uh, I hope it's met with your expectation. I hope it's given you a good overview and uh, I hope to do it again sometime in the future. We've been enjoying it. Uh, Chris, thanks very much for your time. My pleasure. We appreciate it. And uh, on to a future together between uh, the organizations, right? I'll also see. at a personal level. Yeah, absolutely. And I look forward to seeing you in Barcelona. Yes, okay. right. Okay. Take care. Thanks for your time, Chris. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Having attended Thank Alex, nice. thanks a lot for preparing the yeah, thanks, today's Alex. event uh, as well, and Andrews. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. See you thanks soon. Thanks. Yeah, cheers. Thanks. Bye.